Thank you to all who are joining us here today. Um, thank you specifically to my colleagues from Virginia and the District of Columbia. We appreciate your joining us here today. Um, I would first like to congratulate the Chesapeake Bay Program for their tireless work in producing this Bay Barometer. Uh, this report includes new elements which are responsive to this administration's commitment to transparency and openness in government. In recent years, critics have expressed understandable concern that the Bay Program was too reliant on optimistic computer models that did not present an accurate picture of the Bay's health. The ecosystem health results in today's report are based on actual monitoring data and presented in a way that will likely be more helpful to the public and to the region's policymakers. To those of you in the audience, you might be the better judge of this and we would welcome any feedback that you have as to how we are doing on that. In this regard, I think it's worth saying thank you to Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley for his leadership in creating the state's BASTAT program, which sets a model for how to enhance communication and transparency. The truth is that we have stolen some of his ideas in helping to develop this annual report. However, our appreciation for the report's format is tempered by the sad re reality of its findings. The straightforward conclusion is that the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem remains severely degraded despite the concerted efforts of federal, state, and local governments for more than 25 years. Our progress over the past two decades is clearly not adequate. The results are simply unacceptable to the people and the communities of the region. EPA is committed to change and to providing leadership that is necessary to improve these results. We cannot pledge that next year's report will show dramatic improvements in the Bay's health. However, we can and do pledge to provide leadership that will be responsive to the conclusions of scientists and to the desires of the region's communities. In the two short months of this new administration, you have already seen new leadership on climate change, automobile emissions, and air quality. EPA's budget is in the process of being restored to unprecedented levels. No one should doubt that EPA is back. But we cannot do this by ourselves. Today's report card shows also how important leadership is from our partners. One of the most remarkable stories documented in this report is the progress that Virginia Governor Kane has made in preserving land for the people of the Commonwealth. And he has produced these remarkable accomplishments despite an exceptionally difficult budget climate. Congratulations to Governor Kane. Similar congratulations are due to Mayor Fenty here in the District of Columbia. The city's commitments to improve stormwater management, reduce combined sewer overflows to the Anacostia River, and to upgrade the Blue Plains wastewater treatment plant are truly impressive. Thank you, too, to our colleagues here in the district. In closing, we'd like to remind everyone that our challenge is not just improving water quality in the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries. Fundamentally, we need to connect our communities to the bay and its rivers to improve our economies and our quality of life. This challenge is particularly important in our urban areas, where the vast majority of our citizens reside. Over the next several years, EPA will be paying close attention to how we can improve the health of the Bay's urban rivers and streams, increase public access, and provide high-quality outdoor experiences to the people of the watershed. In the final analysis, all of our work is dedicated to the Bay's 17 million residents, most of whom live in areas just like Washington, D.C. Thank you to Administrator Jackson and to my Bay Program colleagues for this exciting and tremendous opportunity. I look forward to working with you all closely in the coming years.